have stage fright and I can't really talk in public. So if I end up screwing it up, please talk. So, uh, so how have you enjoyed the conference so far? Like, were the talks really what you expected them to be nice? Uh, well, each one of us attended the conferences with, uh, I used to when I was young, with an idea of a free t-shirt that I would take home. That, that's one takeaway thing that I have, like really I can take home. But this talk is primarily that. I mean, uh, everyone's uh, already talking about how to do stuff in terms of automation, etc., basics. There's plenty of stuff out there. There's probably something that you can take home and just start playing with. Um, I started with this around like two weeks back and just started to make something usable, ready for the conference. And so it's just a very quick thing. Now, yeah, I'm just trying to start with a joke. I really like this one. Why do programmers mix up Halloween with Christmas? Uh, on 31 December. Do you make this joke? Like, uh, the face, decimal, yeah. and So, anyways. Yeah, so how many of you or like deal with SaaS companies? You do. Uh, anyone like you do deal with the SaaS company? And now next one, how many of you deal with like customer facing SaaS companies, like end user, like where people use our product in the browser eventually? Uh, so one, so uh, at Sem uh, I co-founded this company called Seminar.com, and it's a, it's a SaaS platform for training and online education. Now, one of the biggest problems that we used to face at our company was we were never able to quantify what is the what is the end traffic like? Like, uh, because it's an internet company, right? it's, it's not an OS software or something. So everything has to revolve around the web. The currency of web traffic is basically a static media. It's either images or JavaScript or video or audio. If that doesn't work, your it doesn't matter how fast or how optimized your website is. As long as the last mile of delivery is not optimal, it's, it's all a waste. Now, so what does static content include like? I mean, has, like, which is discussed, audio, images, CSS. Now, with a lot of these new JavaScript frameworks, that means that sites are rendered directly through your, through your CDN, through your uh, S3 bucket or wherever. Like, it doesn't ever reach a, a middle ser server. So the JavaScript is directly speaking with your API. Now, all of this has to get faster and faster. Now, hence we started looking at options like Amazon's uh, CloudFront or Rackspace CDN and also S3. I mean, S3 is much, does a very good job at replicating this. Now, since we banked so heavily on these, still there was no way to get a tangible content out of it. Like, what exactly is the bandwidth that's going up? Like, how much are people using it? Now, being a SaaS product, it's very important for us to optimize our pricing. Now, uh, yeah, I would like to just roll back a step here and say that how I landed up on this. Now, most of us, when we talk of data, we see data as an end state. Like we have huge amount of databases where we store our data and we say that, okay, this user is here, this is that, this is that, we do our analysis on it. Uh, data is not really an end state. I mean, we should look at data in form of streams. Uh, every activity which happens eventually leads to a state. This activity which is happening inside your product is what is of real benefit to you. And that is what I believe should be the metrics of yeah, our pricing as well and probably our infrastructure as well. Uh, so yeah, so most of us do miss out on this important metric as a pricing. Uh, we do look at API logs. We do look at uh, uh, a lot of system health uh, reports as well, but we miss out on the final output, which is the CDN or the static usage. So this product, uh, basically this small tool that I wrote, is just an effort to address this problem and make it easier for us to handle that. Now, what can rich, such sort of risk analysis do for us? I mean, one thing is, the amount of data volume that is transferred per tenant. A uh, tenant here would be, since we are a SaaS product, every guy who is using our product on top of it, uh, 
is who do we need to gauge? Now, how much of that share each tenant is costing us? Then we can come up with a fair pricing. Like if we have a pricing which says that, oh, okay, go ahead, $10 started, right? Per month. Maybe the guy is only using $1 of the, uh, of the total cost. Now, we can't really charge it for the easy to do this because uh, everything is shared, infrastructure. The one thing that each customer really bears a price for is the, is the bandwidth consumption. That's one thing that we can do. We can create demographical usage of data and we know where we have to move our application server. Like if all my backend API servers are sitting in US West Zone, but most of my traffic is coming from Singapore, I know that I have to move my API to Singapore. Now, this is something which will really make my site faster and faster, eventually. Now, yeah, generate, create a uh, pricing model which is based on data consumption. We just discussed that. Check what is the average bandwidth of the video and audio consumed. Now, since we dealt with a lot of videos and audio on our platform, what it would mean is, uh, now company is also serving a lot of traffic in India. We don't have high bandwidth over there. So, eventually it would mean is, that the amount of time it was taken for us to serve a video was sometimes up to 31 minutes as well. Now, that's too large because initially we would make the videos which would be encoded in high definition because the US market would capture it and we'd render the same video to Indian people as well. We realized that this, this is not right. Now, had we not analyzed this sort of usage of our, of our media, we would never reach a conclusion that, hey, this is the real problem that we're facing here. Probably what we need to do is, we need to generate, we need to generate like a really low bitrate encodings of our videos as well, so that, yeah, people can see it faster. Uh, yeah, now, this part of, yeah, this is another, this, the same thing. So now we could actually, every time a video was uploaded, we could define that this is the most predominant encoding streams that we see that should be served because if it's a 5 will be 5 and it's taking so long to serve, we know what is the most optimum amount of bandwidth we should serve. So at our transporters, we could decide that, okay, generate probably 4 or 5 streams of it and as and when we realize that, hey, more and more traffic is coming from such areas, now we see a spike where the data is delivered very fast, we can re-encode the existing videos to really high definition and start serving those. Now, if the next time I log into my website and I am logging in from the Indian region, based on our past metrics, we know what the traffic has been like in India. Now we preheat that content and we serve it. So it's, it's way faster than what it normally would be. Yeah, so I'm gonna take you a bunch of real examples here. Uh, probably should show you a demo of this thing. That would be nicer. So, but anyway, this is a graph that was generated out of number of bytes that have been transferred per day. Uh, this is the number of requests that came in per day. The red line is the number of requests that failed. The blue is the total, the green is the one that was successful results. Now, uh, let's come back to this part. Like this is what eventually we can probably do with it. Now, just on the basis of this front-end consumption, we could come up with fine-grained statistics. Like, this is the revenue share. Like, over here I'm comparing three tenants, that this guy consumes most of the stuff, this one consumes not much, this one consumes like barely anything. Unique visitors, that's pretty easy. I mean, no. Now, since most of these consumptions were happening via the front-end, like, it was static resources. Now, static resources would mean that eventually we could also mine our information to a point where we say that, okay, how many signups happen? Because certain media would only show up at a certain page after a sign up, and it was really easy for us. Now, all of this was, was just not available. There was no easy way for us to access this information. Sure, I could integrate Google Analytics with it, and probably we would start adding other analysis like from API logs, etc. But that would be extra work. This is information which is already there. We just don't harness it. I mean, most of your CDN, most of your S3, and your Rackspace is already giving you that information. It's just that we don't capitalize on it. Now, uh, I don't know if you can see this line clearly. This is completion ratio. Now, uh, this is like, 
so this is, is an online training platform, so it's one of the most important metrics for us that how much has a user, uh, a student completed a course or not. Just based on this end front end consumption, we could also decide how many people are completing the courses or not. Uh, yeah, so this is the tool that I put together. It's called CT Analysis. Basically, if you have, all you need to do is uh, you just take it home, you install it on your computer, attach it to your S3, provide it your secret key, your public key, and we'll start doing stuff. Now, uh, uh, what it consumes at the back end is uh, how many of you are aware of Influx DB? Ever heard of it? So InfluxDB is a time series database. Uh, it is a really nice tool, it's been written in Golang. Now, this is too much data. Uh, let me give you a small demo of this first. Can you guys see this? Right, now, this is the amount of stats that we are trying to mine from one month ago. Uh, there's like, what is it, seven million? Yeah, seven million requests served. Well, there's something wrong, it should not be 8.3, it's too small. Yeah, now, can we switch on the lights so that it's rather easier to take this uh, Easier? Maybe turn off, turn on the, no, 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 it's okay. The last two? Yeah. Yeah, okay, okay fantastic. Now, <coughs> this is the request coming in. So, one moment. Next to me. Does anyone know how to move this thing over here? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, this is what I was telling you about. You see over here, there's a spike that I see that it was 2.2 hours that it took to serve one single video. That's when I realized, okay, hey, there's a huge problem here. Probably we need to bring this time down and start encoding these sort of videos into very small band uh, encoding as well. Like this was probably high definition, so this has to come down to uh, uh, 480p or probably 240p as well. That sort of information can be mined over here. Now, uh, changing this is really easy. Now, if I have to just sort out byte send, this will give you byte send. If I have to sort out bytes received, give me byte received. I can probably change data to say, just show me last seven months, last seven days. So it takes a little while for the internet and stuff. So, this is the front end side of it. Now, most of these tools that exist out there, will give you such sort of features. There, there's a handful of them. There's three stars, there is a couple of more of them. Oh yeah, so see, this is from the last seven days. It just, now, it goes over all those seven million records and generate these stars out of it. Like, this is really quick. Now, all of this is also accessible via API. This API, uh, Influx has its own uh, DSL. Uh, you can use that query language to, so it's, it's pretty much like uh, SQL. So you say select star from CD and logs where blah is blah, time series this, and gives you all that data. So what does this tool take care of? I mean, if you start doing this, you'll run into a bunch of problems. One is, it's huge amount of data, and S3 has a pretty bad API. Uh, you can't really storm it saying that, hey, give me all the data, and give me all the bucket. All these logs are saved as gzip files in your bucket, and each gzip file has a header, and uh, the header has rows corresponding to it. Now, one file can have one row or multiple rows as well, depending on how many requests came in in that particular time frame. I think it's five milliseconds. If multiple requests come in five milliseconds, they got stacked as one single file. The tool takes care of all that. It also makes sure that records are never duplicated. So if you run the tool over and over again, it's really important. Uh, uh, I just showed you how flexible the query can be. That's the front end of it. That's been uh, done using Grafana. Now, 
Uh, it also takes care of log uh, user permissions, like uh, because it's JavaScript based, one could really go to the, the command log and see what the user and passwords are. But since it takes care of only read only and write only permissions, you're safe in that way. Uh, if there is any error recovery, it handles that as well. Now, uh, there's something interesting. This is why I was working with these S3 logs. I realized that uh, logs never always come in the same consistent format. Uh, their headers keep changing every now and then. Now, uh, this tool takes care of all that as well. So if there are the, if there have been header variations, uh, it digests them really easily. Uh, currently, it ingests at a rate of 500 per second because that's the rate that uh, Amazon API fails at. Uh, as in beyond that, request will start failing and won't show up the result. So uh, yeah, it takes a hand, uh, handsome amount of time to initially feed the data. Well, yeah, uh, I forgot about this zone. No, no, who's there? Very long course, no design. So that's why I use influx because SQL attack can get really slow. Uh, if I explain to you uh, a bit of how this tool has been designed, so this is S3 logs and Cloudflare logs. All of them are basically taken at 500. The, the whole tool has been done using Golang. So uh, it's pr pretty much a binary that you can just download and ship to your server. Where, wherever it's, it's rather easy. You can also create a Docker uh, instance out of it. There's configuration on my GitHub that you can download, and that's your server. Now, uh, if the logs are not being processed, they are sent to a, a high capacity messaging queue. From the messaging queue, there are constant feeders that, uh, so it basically forms the uh, producer sync and pipeline model almost at every step. That, that's a small design pattern that you uh, must be aware of. So this high messaging queue, over here, every content is first answered. The records are passed. Once the records are passed, they are sent over to another high messaging queue, which can take a lot, of, uh, which is persistent as well, a lot of, lot of logs. From here, they can be taken to any endpoint of your choice. Like if you don't agree with Influx and you say that I want to use Postgres or Mongo or any other database for it, you can pretty much use that as well. It's a standard format that throws out. I'll split this project into two parts. There is one on the repository, which is by the name of CDM license. The other one is CDM license in plus DB, which is the consumer of it. And the logs are just added to the database, and you can start querying them. Uh, this is a small snapshot of uh, how, uh, probably I should show you a live demo. Maybe one of them is actually, on Cron is running in front. Oh yeah, so I just started this job a little while back. Now, if you say it's throwing an error, because I rerun the process and it says already processed. Now, here's a small number that comes along with it, uh, which basically keeps pulling out the number, uh, the log entries from the database and transforms them over to the queue. From queue, if they really were not processed already, it would be added to the database. Yeah, so uh, uh, all of this tool pretty much uh, ingests around uh, here. I mean, I just showed you, like from last month, it was seven million records, and it could ingest that in around four or five hours. But there's a whole amount of performance improvements that I think I should be doing here. Uh, one is we only have one feeder at the moment, which goes through over your S3 buckets, probably I can split it by folder-wise, directory-wise, and make it distributed. Might require some sort of consensus algorithm like graph or track source. I wouldn't really figure that out. Uh, there is, uh, the queue needs to be changed. Uh, I think I'm looking at Apache Kafka, which can be used for such stuff because the amount of volume of logs can get really, really high at some point of time. And from there, it can be taken over. Uh, support based consumers to scale out heavy loads. Uh, that's what I'm also working on exposing this as a service. Uh, 
Currently, it is uh, a binary that you can download or a source code that you can compile by yourself and have it on your service. But if you want to use it as a service, you can do that as well. Uh, Uh, yep, yeah, that's it. That's all I have. So, do you have any questions? <coughs> any any questions for? No. Yeah, we have eight minutes more. Uh, you guys need any more? Right. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Piyush.